Pinocchio Review – Disney's live-action remake fails to come to life Remakes always prove divisive, but it feels especially the case when it comes to Disney as the originals formed such a big part of our childhood. Pinocchio is the latest in a long line of live-action Disney remakes to arrive and faces the inevitable question, was it worth it? The diplomatic answer would be to say there's nothing in Robert Zemeckis's take that will change your mind about Disney remakes. Even with the always reliable Tom Hanks as Geppetto, this new version of Pinocchio, the first of two to arrive in 2022 with Guillermo del Toro's Netflix movie in December, ironically never comes to life. Unlike 2020's Mulan, Zemeckis and Chris Weitz's remake decides against any sweeping changes to the Oscar-winning 1940 animation. The story follows the same structure and aside from a few tweaks, most notably to the finale, there are few surprises to be found beyond the coachman saying bollocks. The changes that have been made are odd ones too such as a significantly reduced role for the Blue Fairy to the extent that you wonder why they cast Cynthia Erivo and didn't just go full CGI, she at least gets to sing the classic When You Wish Upon a Star, but if you've heard the trailer, you've pretty much heard her new version composer Alan Silvestri and songwriter Glenn Ballard have created four new tracks for the remake while only cutting one from the original Give a Little Whistle. Luke Evans gives the coachman to Pleasure Island his charismatic best, but it's the playful I Will Always Dance from new character Fabiana Kai and Lamia, which makes the biggest impression none of the new tracks hold a candle to the classics, though which is fitting given that the remake doesn't either live action can sometimes bring a fresh approach to a classic, but here there's so much CGI that you might as well be watching a cartoon at times. The changes that have been made are odd ones too, such as a significantly reduced role for the Blue Fairy to the extent that you wonder why they cast Cynthia Erivo and didn't just go full CGI. She at least gets to sing the classic When You Wish Upon a Star, but if you've heard the trailer, you've pretty much heard her new version. Composer Alan Silvestri and songwriter Glenn Ballard have created four new tracks for the remake, while only cutting one from the original. Luke Evans gives the coachman to Pleasure Island his charismatic best, but it's the playful I will always dance from new character Fabiana which makes the biggest impression. None of the new tracks hold a candle to the classics though which is fitting given that the remake doesn't either. Live action can sometimes bring a fresh approach to a classic, but here, there's so much CGI that you might as well be watching a cartoon at times. Instead of perhaps having an animatronic, Pinocchio is a totally CGI creation with a design that's faithful to the cartoon. Jiminy Cricket and Honest John are also CGI, as well as Geppetto's Cat Figaro and Goldfish Cleo which is the weirdest decision. You'd expect the CGI and live-action elements to blend well given Zemeckis' experience, but it rarely feels like the two occupy the same space. It's especially evident in any interaction between Geppetto and Pinocchio where the eyelines don't quite match and it never looks like Geppetto is actually touching Pinocchio. The CGI isn't the only modern aspect to the remake which is still seemingly set in the past, but has had updated touches. There's a Chris Pine gag. Jiminy Cricket it breaks the fourth wall even more frequently and the Pleasure Island section no longer has Pinocchio and co-smoking cigars and drinking beer, unsurprisingly. But the updates aren't enough to prevent comparisons to the original because the remake so closely follows the animation. Everything just feels flat and uninspired here, even the donkey transformations which have traumatized generations of children. If you've never watched Pinocchio and don't fancy watching the original, maybe you'll get more from the remake as, CGI issues aside, it's competently done. Despite its attempts at a poignant finale though, there's nothing here that manages to make it come fully alive. Jodie Comer's new film The End We Start From has been unveiled. Based on the novel of the same name by Megan Hunter, the film is being directed by BAFTA winner Mahalia Below and written by Succession's Alice Birch. Benedict Cumberbatch, previously revealed to be an executive producer, has also been confirmed to be starring in the movie. Catherine Waterston and Mark Strong are among the other stars, alongside Joel Fry, Gina McKee, and Nina Sasanya. The end we start from is described as a powerful, hopeful story about the trials and joys of new motherhood in the midst of devastating floods that swallow up the city of London. The plot synopsis reads, when an environmental crisis sees London submerged by floodwaters, a young family is torn apart in the chaos. As a woman and her newborn try to find their way home, the profound novelty of motherhood is brought into sharp focus in this dystopian portrayal of family survival and hope. Kummer said of her role, My character is ordinary and extraordinary, both her very personal life and the world around her have been turned upside down and she is dealing with the unknown at every turn. Her story is about the quiet heroics of determination, devotion, bravery and love. Elsewhere, Kummer's West End play Prima Facie recently set an impressive record, becoming the highest grossing event cinema release ever, taking in 4.47 million pounds. The one-woman show, written by Susie Miller, will move to Broadway in the U.S. In Prima Facie, the Killing Eve star plays a barrister who specializes in defending rapists, though has her perspective changed when she is raped.
new look at Line of Duty star in Prime Video Movie with Harry Styles. My Policeman has revealed a brand new look at the much-anticipated new movie, showing Line of Duty star Gina McKee in character. The movie, which stars Harry Styles and the Crown's Emma Corrin, focuses on a forbidden love story in 1950s Britain between the former's character Tom and Patrick that goes against the social conventions at the time, with three lives intertwined forever. McKee plays the older version of Corrin's character Marion whom Tom marries, and in new pictures we see the couple together in their more elderly incarnations in the 1990s. Another picture depicts Marion and the older Patrick as they look out towards the sea. The pictures come a few days after my policeman released another new look at the three younger characters as they attend the theater together. The film has been directed by Michael Grandich and written by Ron Niswanner, originally based on the 2012 book by Beth M. Roberts. My Policeman also marks Styles' first time doing nude scenes on camera, the actor admitting earlier this year that he felt vulnerable when filming. I think if you speak about it properly with everyone that's involved, if you remember that the most important thing on the set is the two human beings doing it, he told The Howard Stern Show, if at any point either one of you is uncomfortable, I think having the conversation where it's like, it doesn't matter if they're getting great stuff, if you don't feel good, you tell me and we'll stop. I think being able to trust your director is a gift. That was very helpful. It really meant for kind of a really nice experience working on that movie. My Policeman is released in cinemas on October 21st and will arrive on Prime Video on November 4th. A deleted scene from Thor, Love and Thunder featuring the Guardians of the Galaxy has been revealed. Thor first ran into the Guardians in Avengers, Infinity War, when he struck up a friendship with Rocket and Groot. The newly revealed deleted scene, released via the AV Club and titled Wasting Time, is an alternate version of the scene from the original film where the Guardians come up to Thor and ask him for help in a battle. Here, the Guardians go Thor into joining them by remarking that the hero who helps would be given a statue for their efforts. In the final cut of Thor, Love and Thunder, this scene was much shorter, with Star-Lord not having to do quite as much to get Thor to join him in battle. The Guardians will next be seen in a festive special for Disney+, Plus, which is expected to hit the streaming platform later this year. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 will then follow in cinemas in May 2023. Not much is known about the storyline for the third movie, but to Director James Gunn has promised that it'll serve as the epic conclusion to the story he began in 2014 with the first film. We do know that Will Poulter is joining as Adam Warlock. Peacemaker star Chikwudi Iwuji is playing the High Evolutionary, while Daniela Melchior and Nico Santos also have currently undisclosed roles. Dave Bautista recently appeared to rule out a future movie as Drax following Vol 3. 